This is Rick Thomas at rickthomas.net. We are helping people live effective lives. In this video, I want to walk through what we do as a ministry. We come alongside churches and help to instruct and to affirm, to teach in areas of discipleship, how to do more effective soul care in the body of Christ. I want to walk through two traditional views that are quite common in the local church, and the first one will be what I'm going to call in this video the traditional model. And what you have here are two guys, let's call them Paul and Timothy, and they go to a typical local church, and they do a traditional discipleship model. That's how they do life together. And let me draw a picture of what this looks like. What you have is Paul. He has his life. There's 168 hours in his week. And then there is Timothy. He has his life. 168 hours also, they are working, they have families, they have hobbies, they have all kinds of activities going on in their lives, and they are quite busy people. However, they want to care for each other, and so what they have decided they will do is they will come together and they will meet once a week or every two weeks, maybe once a month, depending on the schedule. Sometimes it's a little more uh, erratic uh, because of the chaos that happens in our lives, and that is the traditional church model. Now, there are several liabilities with this model, and I want to walk through seven of them um, before we move on to the next one. The first one is that this is an artificial context. They're meeting at a restaurant or a coffee shop, but it's not where they do real life, and so there's a bit of artificiality to it. Number two, uh, Paul is only hearing from one perspective, Timmy's, uh, Timothy's perspective on life. He's not talking to his wife or engaging his children, and so uh, that uh, can be a problem when you're trying to do soul care for Timothy, because you're also doing soul care for his family, because Timothy is the leader of his family, and so interacting with the family is essential. Number three, you're not seeing Timothy in action, and so again, it's the artificial context, and you're not meeting Timothy in the milieu where he lives life, where he does life. Number four is a two-hour meeting out of the 168 hours of the week, and of course, if they meet less than that, like bi-weekly or monthly, you're really getting a small and artificial snapshot of Timothy's life. Also, number five, they probably are going through a book. Now, a book is not a bad thing, but it can be an unintended barrier that keeps you from knowing the real person. You know, you can hide behind a book, and you can talk about the content in the book, but not talk about your life. Number six, there's no true follow-up mechanism to reinforce or hold accountable for the things that you discuss, unless you are quite intentional about follow-up. But it doesn't typically happen in this fast-paced life. And then number seven, they go back to the busyness of their life, and they can easily disconnect from each other and so those are seven liabilities. Now, there is another model for soul care. It's the one that uh, Lucia and I practice. It's the one that we teach and try to envision other churches doing. I call it the doing life together model, and it looks more like this, where two lives are overlapping each other. Let's walk through this in another picture. So what we have here is Paul and Timothy. They are doing life together. They have the 168 hours in their week, but uh, they have more intentionality about what's going on in their lives and families, and so they have decided that they are going to do soul care in a more redemptive fashion. And so during uh, any one month, this is what their life looks like. First of all, they get to meet at their church meeting. Now, they have a church meeting on Sunday morning, not Sunday night, Wednesday night, but that is fine because they can actually get together four times in a month. 
And so that is a significant amount of meeting already. And then in addition to meeting at their corporate church meeting on Sunday morning, they also do small group life together. Now, the cool thing about this is that they don't have to calendar plan. These are fixed points on their calendar, say Sunday morning, Wednesday night, Sunday morning, Wednesday night, around the week. They have these fixed points, and so there are eight built-in meetings that they have uh, where they're going to connect with each other during any given month. And, And this is also great because it's not an artificial context. It's where they can truly uh, meet each other uh, in the in the context in which they live, their lives, their wives, their families are involved, and uh, there's more data collecting going on here, and it's information that's in the life in which they're living, so it's pretty cool. But in addition to these eight times that they can meet during the month, they can also get together as uh, couples to couples. That's not that hard to do, and you're really just talking about meeting as a couple one time out of 30 days, and and that's typically not a challenge since we all eat anyway, and we all do similar things, and so getting together as a couple for eating or coffee is not that difficult. And then if Paul wants to meet with Temp- Timothy, they can do coffee in the morning and or whenever, or just meet at some uh, time. And then, of course, there are all these other random events like sports that they may attend or, uh, hey, let's go ride to the store or let's go hiking or whatever it is that you like to do. There are random opportunities where you can just get together throughout the month, uh, which also increases the opportunity to serve each other And then you don't want to forget social media. My goodness, there's social media out there, or Facebook, where uh, you can uh, communicate with each other in all kinds of ways. That also includes email, by the way, and it includes texting. And so you can text each other and email one another, encourage each other, share Scripture verses. And so as you look at this doing life together model, Well, there are several things that are positive about it. I've mentioned some already, but uh, just to repeat, this requires little planning because these activities, most of them flow within your normal life. The potentiality of connecting in different ways with different forms and different depths of communication is, is built into this idea here. And so the conversations are not always serious and they're not always shallow or superficial. They're both and, and you do need both and when you're uh, when you're uh, are trying to disciple each other. Of course, the operative word in this model here is intentionality. Will you imitate this aspect of the gospel? God is an intentional being, and He wants us to Im- imitate Him in intentionality. And so if you Uh, Say, I'm going to be intentional about this idea of soul care. Well, you have a template here that can really work. One of the cool things, as mentioned, is you can observe the person in his or her real-life settings. You can see the spouse, the children, the activities, the interactions, and, and so much more. It gives you a better perspective on the kind of person that you are caring for. And also, you can gradually build a relationship here because there are so many opportunities uh, that go from shallow to deep conversations. And as you build that relationship, you will have the privilege of bringing deeper truth and more challenging uh, correctives into the person's life because you've actually done life with them as opposed to uh, one meeting a month in an artificial context. And of course, as you see them uh, this often, you see evidences of God's grace in their lives, and it gives you many opportunities to encourage them, to motivate them, to affirm them in the journey. And of course, there will be mistakes. There will be things that uh, where they're not doing so great at, and that will give you an opportunity to come along and gently restore them and to help them to overcome whatever it has snagged them. And so this is a doing life together model that I want to take it 
uh, from another perspective as I, I wrap this up and uh, just show you how it can work in another visual. Of course, the, the target is always the heart. Uh, the target is always our hearts. We want to be changed from the inside out. So in this model, what I've developed with those uh, contact points, those connection points, is the most shallow or not as deep, obviously, as social media. Of course, social media can be deep as you share text, scriptures, as you hold accountable, as you ask questions. But generally speaking, social media uh, is not as personal. And so it's the farthest out as far as the communication is concerned. And then random events as well. These are more fun times where you're just uh, you always want to uh, build relational bridges to carry truth across. And so these random events where you can uh, enjoy each other and laugh and you know cook out in the backyard or whatever, these are opportunities to just build relationally. And then the corporate meeting, uh, you can worship God together, you can pray together, you can talk about sports, slap each other on the back, you can tell a joke and just enjoy each other. But it's a larger context. And so the opportunities to dive into deep things, it might not happen as often, but then you have small group meetings where there are less people, less distractions. You come together where uh, you can talk more specifically about things like the sermon, for example, and what God is doing in your life. As you see here on the screen, these conversations get tighter and tighter, deeper and deeper as you move closer to the heart. And then as you get together, a couple on couple, you're talking to each other about what's going on with your marriages. And then as you meet person to person, you can get really super intimate. So as you, uh, probably not at the corporate meeting on Sunday morning, you're going to get intimate in your conversation, but that's okay because what you've done, you've set up context here uh, to where you will have those chances to be able to speak in a more uh, profound way, uh, more personal way into the person's life. And so this is a doing life together model. I have found it very effective uh, but I'll go back to the one operative word that will make it work or not work, and that is intentionality. Will I be intentional in living out this model with those who are closest to me? I hope that's helped. It's discipleship, two views, traditional or doing life together. And this is Rick Thomas. You can find me at rickthomas.net. We are helping people live effective lives. Thank you for watching the video.